there is one thing that Jerry and Joan may be quite sure of on the magic island of Euclidea. No matter what part of this artificial island in the South Pacific they visit, they're going to get action of some kind. When Captain Bradford was put to sleep by a ray gun in their prison cells, and Mrs. Gregory offered to remain with the captain until he recovered, it was decided that Jerry and Joan should go alone on a tour of as much of the island as they were allowed to reach. Their friend, the Euclidean girl submarine commander, has just left them in a tiny storage closet on the ninth level below the surface. And, as there is no echo heard, Jerry and Joan feel safe in talking the situation over. All right, then. All right. I'm right. Very well, Jerry. You are correct. I said that girl submarine commander was a friend of ours, didn't I? You did? And she just now helped us out a lot, didn't she? How? By telling us we had three days to plan what we were going to do about escaping from this place. Her assistance would have been more valuable had she offered a plan of escape. Oh, sure. And she could have been a real help if she had duck up a magic carpet and had us all back in Hollywood in ten minutes. Well, you ought to be blame grateful for what she did tell us. Why, in three days we can do a whole lot. And we'd better start right now. Do you have a plan? Yeah. Keep moving. Standing still's no good. Then let us go at once. Have you got any idea what the directions are down here? No, Jerry. Sections of the island may be revolved, and as you know, the entire island has been moved. It is quite impossible to determine any direction. Okay, Joan. We'll just get out in the hall and start. We may speak freely without fear of detection as long as our voices remain normal in tone. But when they get that funny hollow sound, Euclidians are listening to us, huh? That is right. Then let's remember that, and when our voices start jumping back at us out of the walls, quit talking. This is not the door through which we entered this room. Huh? Not the same door? No. We entered through that door. Then where does... Hey, this room has a door on every wall. There are many rooms with a door in each wall. We must use care in our choice of a corridor through which to continue our search. Yeah, just a little harder than finding a camel in a needle. Every one of these blame halls look just alike, and you know it. They're all shining steel tunnels, so we haven't got any choice. But if you say this is a different door from the one we came in, then let's go this way. We may as well. To retrace our former course would only take us back to the cells occupied by Mother and the Captain. Precisely. Jerry Hall, you do not like that word. Why do you use it? Well, just to get your goat. How many times must I remind you that I have I'm no goat? goat. Never mind, flying off the handle every time I open my mouth. Let's get busy. I have no idea where this will lead us. Well, just so we go someplace and learn something. There's so much I don't know about this island that it makes no difference where I start in learning it. Hey, ouch! Jerry, did you hurt yourself? No, I didn't hurt myself, but this... Well, this whatever it is here sure didn't do me any good. I can see nothing there. It must be one of the invisible steel doors. Invisible steel? I should have expressed myself differently. The door is actually so perfectly transparent that it is impossible to detect its presence with the eye. Hence, it is called invisible. You mean there's a steel door right here in front of me? Feel it with your hand. Well, golly whiskers. That stuff is clearer than glass. I can see the whole corridor through it, and it's still as strong as steel. Euclidia is a place of wonders to those who are not accustomed to it. You've been here 14 years, and you get plenty of surprises, I notice. I was not attempting to appear superior, Jerry. Okay, just so you don't. Remember what I told you. The higher they are, the harder they fall. Who will fall from what? Oh, skip it. And let's get around the other side of this invisible door and see what goes on there. All these blame hallways look just alike to me. We do not know where we are going. Nope, but we're on our way. Why are you walking with your arm out before you? Well, so if I meet another of those funny steel doors, I'll bump my hand instead of my nose. This is most unusual, Jerry. Huh? What is? That we should be allowed to walk around so freely in these lower corridors. Some of the most carefully guarded secrets on the island are contained in these lower levels. Well, I sure haven't seen anything yet that I'd run home and tell about. Perhaps we haven't tried the proper doors. Well, we'll keep on trying them until somebody stops us. And here's where we try another one. Right now. You are very careless in your method of striking these doors. They won't bite, will they? Some of them are electrified. Hey, fine time to tell me that. After letting me open two of them with my bare hands. Well, what do you do with these things? I would suggest that you press against the door with your shoe. Yeah, maybe you're right does not open. I discovered that for myself. 
This door you must pull toward yourself. The small opening near the bottom will suffice. Use the toe of your shoe. You do see things at that, don't you? On Euclidia, our power... I know, I know. But let's go on hunting places to learn things. Hey, Joan, did you notice that? While the door was open, the communication channels were active. Yeah, and somebody heard what we said. But we said nothing while the door was open. Then somebody heard nothing, which is swell. But how about that echoing noise? Doesn't that mean the opening of that door was registered on some of their instruments? Presumably. But it may be some time before the graphs are calibrated and readings noted. The scientists are occupied otherwise. I think our progress is not being followed. Well, let's go some more then. And I hope you're right. We should now be nearing the center of the island. Center? It can't be. This thing is a thousand feet across, isn't it? The main portion is 600, roughly. Actually, the diameter of the central section is exactly one-tenth of a nautical mile, or 608 feet. Well, I know we haven't walked any 300 feet since we left the confinement cells. Agreed. However, I think the cells are not on the extreme outer ring of the island. Furthermore, the narrowing curvature of these walls would indicate our progress toward the center. Looks like you're right. Well, what do we find when we hit the center? The central control elevator is the axis of Euclidia. Well, then maybe we can get up in that elevator shaft and see what's going on in some of the other levels. It will not be so simple, I think. While I am not familiar with this level, it is only logical to suppose that we will find various chambers arranged around the elevator shaft. And maybe somebody in those chambers won't like the idea of our touring around. Precisely. Oh, undoubtedly. Well, if we're near the center, we'll soon find out, because here comes another door. Jerry, the door is not coming. Well, we're coming to the door. What's the difference? A great deal. If the door were moving toward us... All right, all right. I'm sorry I started it, but here is the door. We should proceed with more than usual care now. I know it. But how am I going to do anything about it? The door and walls will be soundproofed. It would do no good to listen at the door. Well, that's what I was afraid of. Yet I fear that something we will regret will follow the opening of that door. What, for instance? I do not know. Sure, you're a help. If you were clever enough to ridicule me, you would not need my help. Well, you win. Let's go on in. But we may be in danger. We are on that anyhow. And we've got to do everything we can to get your mother and Tex and ourselves out of this. Now, you stand over to one side, and if any ray guns or tricks are waiting to jump out at us, it won't hit both of us, and you can run back to the others. I would not run away and leave you, Jerry. You'd better, but maybe nothing will happen. Here I go. Hey, Joan, look at that. I have not seen him for years. I had forgotten he existed. I think we may safely stand and watch him for a moment. Well, keep your voice down. The old guy will hear you. But he is quite deaf. Deaf? Yes, deaf. You don't mean deaf, do you? I said deaf, and I mean deaf. Totally lacking in the sense of hearing. Oh, I know what deaf means, all right. But I don't see how he could be deaf. You do not know that man, do you, Jerry? Never saw the funny old guy before. Then you are in no position to judge as to whether or not he is deaf. Look, Joan, that old guy is tapping on glasses of water with that little steel rod, isn't he? He is? Well, I've seen him do things like that on the stage, and they were always making noises or playing tunes for those glasses. This old man is doing much the same thing. He is making musical notes. That's just what I thought. And he acts like he was pretty busy at it, too. Now watch when he hits that glass and then listens till the last little note of sound is gone. If you can see and understand what he's doing, why must you question his ability to do it? Because if he's deaf, he can't hear what he's doing. And no matter what note he hits or what noises he makes, he wouldn't know anything about it. He is listening to the vibrations. Vibrations? Yes. He has trained his sense of touch to such perfection that he will instantly recognize several thousands of notes of the audible scale. Thousands of notes? What are you talking about? Well, there aren't even hundreds of notes, let alone thousands. On Euclidia, we have developed our sense of hearing far beyond your worldly knowledge, and we easily hear sounds entirely beyond the range of your ears, sounds to which even your most delicate detection and recording apparatus will not respond. Golly, whiskers. You mean we can only hear half of what's going on around us? You do not hear one hundredth of the sound waves beating at your ears. Well, maybe not, but I know that I hear plenty. Hey, Joan. That note is just struck. I can't stop hearing it. Jerry, are you hearing a musical note? I oh, sure I am. It sounds funny. No, no, it's not funny. It hurts. It hurts my ear. It makes my head ache. Get back and close the door at once. Hurry, Jerry. What for? Do as I tell you at once. Now, do you hear that note? Well, no. Well, I guess I don't. 
But my head sure feels funny. That was your keystone note. Why, what? Your keystone note. That note, steadily played or beaten within your hearing, would soon make you deaf or worse. Make me deaf? What about you? I did not hear it. You didn't hear the sound when he hit that glass? I heard the common, vibrant note of the accepted musical scale, but the sustained note, the constant sound which continued to beat against your inner ear, that was not key to my hearing, hence it did not bother me. You mean that old guy's experimenting with those notes to find out which one bothers people? And which ones that keep on hearing until it would drive them crazy? Exactly. Even in your poor scientific world, you have heard of a musical note shattering a glass or even shaking a small building, have you not? Well, sure. When I... that man's experiments are completed, he will be able to sound a note which will destroy a large building, a bridge or a tunnel. One note. And a battleship will crumple as easily as a piece of paper. Another note and an airplane high in the air will disintegrate. The note will strike the keynote of the motor. The synchronization will be destroyed and the machine will shake itself to pieces in a matter of seconds. Golly, whiskers. Why, if they could really do that, these crazy scientists could capture the whole world without hurting anyone. And they wouldn't need one single gun or, or a weapon of any kind. Precisely, Jerry. You have seen only one of the many devices being made ready for G-47's conquest of the world. Yet that one alone should convince you of the futility of ever escaping from this island and coming back to take it over. Well, it don't look so good. I'll say that. <laughs> 